Uh, we're here with Chris Vellin. Thanks so much for taking the time. Always nice to see you. We always get to see you each year at Canadian Music Week. So That's right. It's, uh, it's habitual at this point. So yes. thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Uh, Fables for Fighters uh, isn't out till April, but we've had a chance to listen to it a mm -hmm. bit. And um, there's a certain maturity to the sound, I think, that's, mm. that's coming along. And um, I was really impressed with the songwriting more. I, I think that's what, for me, is becoming more and more impressive is the songwriting. The playing has always been consistent, I think, but mm -hmm. the songwriting, is that, is that something that you're working, consciously working on? Is that something that you're... Yeah, very much so. I'm glad you, you feel that way about it, yeah. For me, songwriting is everything. I mean, that's where I get the greatest joy. That's, for me, that's the work. That's the work I do. So I, I spend a lot of time crafting the songs and writing lyrics, and I, I, like, I labor over <laughs> it. So. So yeah, and I think because of that, with every album, I'm, I'm growing as a songwriter, you yeah. know, getting to understand songwriting, getting to understand myself as an artist, you know, right. and, and, and sort of settling into that role as a songwriter. More. I guess as somebody who's with yourself so much, whether you're traveling or you're performing, it's just you. You're there for everybody to see. That must be a crazy feeling to, to always just, I don't know, is it all about them or is it all about you or, or how's the balance? That's a good question. Um, I try not to think so much about them, <laughs> them being the audience, yeah. insofar as it means, you know. Or the voices in your yeah, head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's so many. <laughs> I, you know, I just try and get in the song when I'm performing, for example, yeah. and, and be in the moment and the emotion of the song yeah. and so that I can just deliver the best performance I can. And that's right. not so much about me, that's about sort of just like the song first right. of all and 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 just like yeah it is about the people seeing the show yeah you know I want to make it something like I want to give something so that they give it back you know yeah. you know when you see shows and you just they're not selling it to you yeah. the artist I don't want to ever be that be that person I always want there to be full energy and an authenticity right? authenticity yeah because otherwise why do it you know it's hard enough playing these songs every night you want right. to find something new in them every night you know so. Uh, Yestin Polson, who mm -hmm. we know from David Gray Records, uh, produced this record. And I was reading that you locked yourself in a basement of a Brooklyn uh, apartment and just jammed out these songs. Well, we did. We didn't quite lock. We could get out, <laughs> but, but we spent. It was this, it's Park Slope is a part of Brooklyn. And right. It was just anyway. Um, the the label guy's basement um, is where we we did it, and it's a stone basement. Wow. And it was very sort of humid because it was in July in New York, yeah. which this past July was like the hottest on record. At the right, right, right. So what we did was we spent about a month with the, um, the players on this album um, pre-prodding, pre which I'd never really had the chance to do in the past albums. It's, I was just show up and the players are there and we have to work with what's there. But yeah. this was a real chance to like hone every song and, and be really thoughtful with the arrangements, down to every drum hit, you know, bass note, which was great. And then so what we, because we had that month to, to work on that, and Yeston was there every day. I mean, he's you know he's a very big producer. He's done yeah. all of David Gray's records, but he's so he's such a consummate producer. He was he was like right there every day, sweating it out with us. And he really took a lot of care, and he wanted everything to be um, deliberate. And that sort of brought out. It made me want to rise to that challenge yeah. too, you know, so that mm -hmm. there was no ambivalence in the album. So we spent we spent a lot of time on the pre-prod and getting the arrangements just right, so that when it came time to record them, we could do it live off the floor, which was a, an imperative for this album. Yeah. Yeston was really um, adamant about it, and I was too, because I wanted to kind of get that the the emotion of, of a live performance in there. You yeah. know, I really wanted the songs like I wanted them to be real, honest, and um, on that we grew a sort of larger texture to it. But just the core of it. Drums, bass, guitar, vocals, we did yeah. that all live off the floor. So. so it was all recorded live off the floor, and then for texture, you, you brought in, or you went and sought some sounds, right, that you brought into the mix? Is, yeah. that, is that what happened? Yeah, we did. He's, yes, it's got a great sort of um, trove of, of just old synths and analog sounds and just tricks. Yeah. And so we spent a lot of time just in this project studio in Brooklyn figuring out sounds and getting all kinds of cool sounds. We didn't really want to settle for anything that that's been done or that it sounds like something else. We tried to get really original sounds that complemented the album and sort of brought it to another place. So there's a lot of texture and layering yeah, on it. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's so nice to hear you just play acoustic because yeah. it, it kind of brings it back full circle to, what to, the, song. to the songs, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, let's talk about a, a couple songs on the record. Yeah, please. Um, uh, I mentioned to you that Scatterbrain uh, has this beautiful vocal, female vocal on it, and you said to me that it's... It's Sarah Johnston from right. uh, Brand Van 3000 
and uh, she's my girlfriend, and she's sang on the past three albums that I've done. Yeah. But in, I think this particular song, I mean, all the songs she sings on are great, but they, really, there's something about this harmony that was extra sort of magical. Yeah, agreed. And, and she brings out, yeah, the, the melancholy of that song, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's hard to do without her. <laughs> um, you Owe Nothing, What You Played For Us, is another uh, great singer-songwriter, just great song. Um, can you talk about writing that song? What inspired you to write that song? You know, a lot of the songs in this album came when I was on the road, and, and um, and um, so, so there were very sort of like lonely settings for writing these. Yeah. But you owe nothing was a, was a funny one because I actually wrote it when I was in San Francisco recording my last album, and it was f to be for a, a friend's horror movie. <laughs> wow. It's sort of like a B horror movie straight to video, um, and I won't, I won't give the name of it. But it was meant to be the closing song when the climax has happened right. and um, the heroine has killed off the whoever it is the ghoulish. Uh, evil oh. person and uh, this is sort of like the you know coming into the credit right. song and so it plays on some of the themes that were in the film and that a that a heroine would be going through but i really it had to come from somewhere like personally you right. know, to make it stick and so yeah. that exercise of being able to do it through like a movie soundtrack a horror movie soundtrack <laughs> somehow brought out something different a different style of writing. I know? can't lie to you. I don't see your songs as part of a horror movie soundtrack. Yeah, I know. It's that's, bizarre. That's the funny part of it. Well, it's the part where everything's okay, you see. Yeah, everything's yeah. fine and peaceful, and it's right. like there's a boat moving over water, so it's, it's <laughs> so very it's serene, so it kind of works. But yeah, there's sort of like this darkness to it that I really like that I could play with. So you're on your own. Makes sense that you're at the back of a bus by yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, and, the, and the last song uh, that I, I just wanted to talk to you about is Same Clothes, and I, I mentioned when we were riding the elevator that you've sort of channeled this, this inner Paul Simon, um, but mm -hmm. Same Clothes is one of those songs, and, and we've heard some of that from you in the past. Um, is, it, is it Paul Simon, or, or am I missing? Like, is there somebody else? I, I also hear a lot of Tom Petty. Hmm. Um, what, what, what is it? Are those the, the guys? I mean, it's, it's all these earlier singer-songwriters that have trailblazed and set the scene for you to, to make music. But right. are there specific writers that you listen to more and that you, you know, as somebody who wants to mature as a songwriter, that you appreciate more? You know, it's funny. I think, like, those people you mentioned, Paul Simon and Tom Petty, they, I've, I've listened to a, a lot of them in my yeah. formative years, but I listen to a lot of things. Like, I yeah. have a pretty eclectic... Um, Influence, set of influences like yeah. from, from everything just like I was listening to like punk and like British new wave stuff and um, but as well as like reggae and all kinds of crazy yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. I think I think what brought me there like the Paul Simon comparison is great because I, I love what he does but I think in a way we kind of have similar influences ourselves like it's it's really what brought me there is my interest in like African music and right. rhythms um, I think there's a certain timbre to our voice too yeah but, and I love his writing and like this, the subject matter and the way he goes after things is right. something that I kind of like, it's weird because now, now, now I see the comparisons. You yeah. know? But I wasn't like actively trying to sound like Paul Simon. Right, right, right. A funny thing, but now I see it. I'm like, oh wow. And, and now I listen to more of his stuff and I, I think he's just, just a master songwriter. So, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't try and like imitate anybody. I try oh, and like sort of, no, no, I know, I know everyone says that, but like definitely these influences come through in everybody's writing, but um, I, th I sort of try and like arrive at something that's my own sound, but um, I'm certainly taken from all these different spot, like well, you know, and places. At a, that at a certain have, point, there's only so much that can have been written or, or that's heard, it. right? That's so it. you're going to be, exactly. and I think I think our generation is certainly doing that more than generations past because we grow up listening to all of these great writers and all of these great singers and mm -hmm. performers, and we sort of build our own sound and our, our sounds, our generation sounds are going to be even more eclectic and our kids' generation of sounds are going to be that much more eclectic because of all the things that they bring to the table. I know. Like, it's like instant access to well, everything. Well you, have like, yeah. well, you have like an iPod and nobody's iPod is just singer-songwriters. Everybody's yeah. iPod, I, you know, there's Wu-Tang Clan on my iPod and then there's Chris Felon's mm -hmm. music on my iPod. So how can, how can my kids not have totally different influences from what I listen to, so it's great. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you, the record comes out in April, you're doing some touring? Yes, yeah. Um, around Canada? And touring through Canada, yep. And then what's next? What's next? I think there's just gonna be a lot more touring. Good. Touring through Canada and the US and really trying to push this album. I'm trying to be 
play more with a band this year. Um, wow. Uh, which will be new for me because I've done so much on my own. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the loop, loop pedal, <laughs> which is good, but, you know, it's, I've always meant for there to be other people, you know, to have that energy of it. So, um, the songwriting but, might not be as lonely anymore. There you go. Yeah, it'll, <laughs> it'll change what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, continued success, man. And, Thank uh, you. And hopefully we won't wait another year for you to come back, and uh, we'll see you real soon. Great. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks, man. Right. Cheers. Explore Music wears English laundry apparel.